A new report has revealed worrying signs that the region's economy is seriously underperforming. Low productivity and low educational qualifications in the workforce mean the Midlands economy is £50 billion poorer than it should be. It's been a problem in the region for decades, of course, and in a moment we'll hear about plans to tackle it. But first, one East Midlands textile firm has come up with its own solution by taking over the school next door. Here's Rob Pittam. Here's a top. You can almost bespoke it, which you can't do if you're manufacturing the Far East. Yeah. A thriving firm being held back by a lack of skilled workers. David Nieper in Alfreton is one of the last textile companies still manufacturing in the UK. It exports high-end women's fashion to customers across Europe. The fall in the value of the pound means its order books are full. It could take on more work but struggles to find the staff. The lack of skills is an enormous Achilles heel for this company. We could have grown much, much more if we could find the people. Now the people are there, but the people don't have the right skills. The demand for British product is far in excess of what we can produce at the moment. I think we could perhaps have hired maybe a hundred more people over the last three or four years if we could find those people. It's a common story across the region. In its vision for growth, the Midlands engine admits the region's economy is underperforming. It's worth £207 billion a year, but it would be worth £261 billion if its productivity matched the UK average. The region is home to 15% of the UK population, but only accounts for 12% of its economy. The report found that skill shortages are a major problem facing the Midlands economy. 10% of the workforce has no formal educational qualifications, compared with a national average of 8%. This company is tackling that problem head on. We're going to look at the four P's of marketing. Right next door was a failing school, one of the worst performing in the country. So the textile firm took it over and relaunched it as the David Nieper Academy. The brand new £50 million school is seeing results improving. The single most important element of the sales process is the clothes. Its links with the company are aimed at teaching students how better qualifications improve career prospects and to see the relevance of their studies. We had employers come in such as Owen Taylor and did mock interviews with us and things. Did that make you think about a career in that kind of area? Yeah, it sort of opened up a lot of doors and made you realise there are other opportunities out there. And what do you fancy doing when you leave? Um, I've been looking at going to university after doing the level three course and then going to accountancy. You're not thinking, I've got a school next door, they're all going to come straight out of there into here, factory fodder. No, it's very much the responsibility of companies to train their own specific skills. What we need is schools to have a broad and balanced education, teaching maths, teaching science and English, so that those children can pursue the very best career they possibly can. They need to have aspiration, they need to have ambition, and that brings social mobility to them and their families. The company believes its schools academy is an idea that could be copied throughout the region and across the country and tackle the problems of low skills and poor qualifications which are holding the East Midlands economy back. Well Nigel, that's a school and a firm that you both know very well in your constituency of Amber Valley. It must be incredibly frustrating to hear, to hear a, a manufacturing boss say that he could in the past few years have taken on a hundred extra workers, but he just can't find the, the right skill levels. Yeah, I mean that's really the worst thing in the world when you've got people looking for work and you've got employers that want to take people on but they can't match the skills. I mean, I, I suppose that industry is a, a typical one for these Midlands. We used to have lots of people making clothes, that industry moved away and now the people who have those skills are it's just not there. So, I mean, he, that business has been extremely active in trying to uh, get those skills being retrained. But I think it's a, a more general issue of how do we get schools and colleges to actually get people work ready and how do we make sure that our, our colleges are teaching people the skills that the local economy needs. Mm. And uh, I think what he's tried to do there of linking up work and school is a, a great step forward sure. in that. I think the government's ideas around a T level was actually making uh, young people and their parents value a vocational education in, the same way as a degree will really help well, let's, in this Let's situation. talk about productivity because that's been an issue in this region for a long time now, yes. hasn't it? Yes, it, 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 it certainly has and we welcome very much the, the report, although it has to be said it covers the whole of the Midlands and here in the East Midlands I think we have our own issues. The West Midlands are a bit different uh, and productivity is crucial and growth is crucial mm. and lack of skills, as Nigel says, has been a problem and is a real problem now. 
But if we want to grow this economy, it does seem absolutely remarkable uh, that the main line, uh, Midlands main line decision uh, was reversed just a few months ago. It was absolutely necessary. That's a line that goes right through the heart of the East Midlands. Well, I know that was a huge and, disappointment. And it's, gone. For it's a huge disappointment. For politicians I think for, of all stripes, it has to well, be said. And I think for a lot of business people, too. This was okay. a really sad decision, and I, I'm, I'm not sure now why it was made. Okay.